It's been a couple of months now since Twitch has given access to animated emotes to partners and affiliates. But when you actually go on Twitch, you don't find a lot of streamers with custom animated emotes. Why is that? There are multiple reasons. Of course, finding someone that can actually draw an emote for you is already pretty difficult. And then finding someone that can take that emote and actually animate it, let alone looking for someone that can do both and all of that on a streamer budget, it's going to get hard. Now, I'm not a professional animator at all. Actually, I hate drawing and even animating really, but I do a little bit of motion design. So what I did is I went on Twitter and I asked you guys, hey, post your emotes. I'm going to pick a couple of them and then I'm going to see how I would create a process in order to take pre-existing emotes and animate them. So that's what I'm going to do in this video. I'm going to show you the process between Adobe Photoshop and Adobe After Effects in order to animate pre-existing emotes. Now, before we start, there's actually one more solution that is way faster and easier to manage, and that is today's sponsor. And maybe you know that Owned is your one-stop shop for everything you can customize as a Twitch streamer or a YouTube streamer or even a, just a YouTuber. Owned has the biggest library for everything ever. Overlay packs, emotes, animated emotes, but they also allow you to create your own stuff if you want to make emotes, you want to make badges, avatars, even gaming logos, but there is a brand new thing that they just came out with, which is the animated emote maker. And let me show you, you go from here, you click on make your own animation. You can use emotes that you already have on Twitch. You can upload emotes from your computer. You can also transfer some emotes that you already created using owned. I'll use my Twitch emotes. I have to connect with Twitch, authorize. Now all my emotes from my Twitch channel will appear on the left here, and I can just pick which emote I want. Then from there, I'll see all the animations that are available. For example, this one. I can click and when I hover, it will show me the animations. This one is like fire. I guess that's a thumbs up. That's party time. We'll get a bonk. That's a resident sleeper. Oh, that one would be cool for like big donations. We get an RIP. We're getting <laughs> buried. Anyways, I'm gonna let you check the rest out over at own.gg slash get level. That's my special little link. Also, own is always getting like cool promos and stuff like that. So keep an eye out for that top bar. Right now you can get 50% with the code streaming on all products. So that's own3d.gg slash gal level. All right, so out of all the tweets, I actually pick four of them. We have the real Fox Hound, N%, Brett Sloan, and we have Killer King. Basically, I took a look at them and then I quickly imagined what an animation would be like. For this one, I would probably definitely want the eyes to kind of not completely close, but to get smaller. So what I did is in Photoshop, I separated the eyes. And um, if I show you layer by layer, basically I went here and I just painted over this and then I separated those eyes on each layer. For Ampersand, I had another idea. I knew I was gonna animate like the whole head a little bit, maybe make the, the lower jaw go up and down slightly. I didn't want to animate the tongue, uh, but I also wanted to have like the eyes close a little bit. Keep in mind, those are emotes. They're gonna be like super low res. So the quality doesn't need to be like that detailed, right? Right? But basically, I have a couple of frames. I can add a blink animation on top of the movement. Uh, for Brett's alone, I hope I'm pronouncing those names right. I basically went ahead and cleared all of that. And then here I added the butter on a separate layer, the right eye, the left eye, and the mouth. So hopefully I'll be able to do something with that. I'll probably just slightly move them, maybe make them bigger, maybe add a little bit of shininess to the eye. I don't know yet for that one. I just separated the layers. And then we have Killer King. And for this one, I knew that I wanted the heart to kind of beat. So I wanted to have that layer with the hands and the heart separated. I wanted the head to be separated. In order to do that, I actually had to extend the head a little bit, which kind of looks ridiculous. You can tell that I didn't draw this, but it's just enough clearance for me to uh, add some movement if I want the head to, let's say, if I want the head to do this and that, right? We have the shoulder layer at the bottom here. So basically now we're going to add those into Adobe After Effects. We're going to have a composition that's probably going to be like two seconds max. And we're going to add the PSDs so that I have each layer on a separate layer within After Effects. All right. So here we are in Adobe After Effects. I'm going to click on new project. I'm actually going to go to new composition. I'm going to set the width to, I think I made those 500 by 500. Nice. And then duration, we want it to be, let's put two seconds. 60 FPS, definitely not necessary. Let's go for something like 24. We have to think about compression, even though 500 by 500 is a lot. We don't want the files to be too big. We want to be able to upload them to Twitch. So let's start with uh, the real Fox Hound. I believe this is like the simplest one. Let's drag and drop our PSD in here. It's going to ask us, hey, you want edit editable layer styles or you want a merge layer? We're just going to keep editable. We want everything to be uh, separate, basically. Here I can double click on it to open the composition. And as we can see, we have um, the previous settings. So two seconds, composition, and uh, from there, we can do whatever we want with it. So here, 
here all i want to do is animate um the eyes i want them to get a little smaller and maybe we'll animate the ears so i'm gonna go in my effects panel or you can also go to just effects up here i'm gonna type uh warp i don't actually remember the actual name for this i think it's mesh warp and I'm going to drag and drop it onto the left eye. Nice. Okay. Going to make sure my timeline is at zero. I'm going to zoom in here. And I believe distortion mesh is what I want to keyframe. So I'm going to click on the stopwatch. So it's going to say, hey, at zero seconds, this is what the mesh is supposed to look like. Let's go to one second and let's basically modify this. Okay. We're actually going to just duplicate this later. I'm going to click on left eye here in my layers list. I'm going to press on U. So it brings up the keyframes that I have. I'm going to select that first keyframe. Control C. Go to the end here and Control V. This is what we have. Not bad. I'm going to right click here and I'm going to go on easy ease. And if I really want to play around with the motion and stuff, I can do this just to make it ease into it a little bit more. All right. If I click away from the mesh, it's going to disappear. I can press play. It doesn't look great, but again, it's going to be an emote. It's going to be barely visible, so you can look at it like that, basically. And this is where it needs to look OK. And I think it looks OK from here. I'll adjust the keyframes a little bit more. All right, what I'm going to do is turn off that right eye here. I'm going to click on left eye. I'm going to press Control D to duplicate it. I'm going to right click on the layer here, transform, and I'm going to flip it, flip horizontal. Nice. I'm going to press P to bring up the position. I could just manu manually click and drag really, but I like doing it clean like that. And about here seems right. If I press play. There you go. Okay, cool. Layer one, which is the whole fox. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the puppet position pin tool. I'm going to add a couple of pins and I'm going to try to basically animate them a little bit. So if I want to animate the ears, I'll put a pin here. I know I want this to be an anchor point. Actually, let, let me control Z. I'm going to bring everything back to the first frame. Now, if we want to animate the ear, for example, I want to have an anchor point at the bottom of it, maybe over there. I want one that is placed there. OK, that's nice. Might place some more uh, at the whiskers. Is that what you call those? Nice. And then, of course, at the top. This is really what we're going to be moving. Nice. So if we go back to layer one and we press U, we're going to see that it actually already created our keyframes. So if we move into the timeline, let's go to one second, click on mesh to bring those back up. Now we can actually move those and uh, transform it. If I want to move this like that, I'm going to move this like that right there and move the whiskers up a little bit and move those down. Nice. And I'm going to copy all the keyframes from the first frame. Control C, go to the end, Control V. Nice. So if we press play. If there's too much movement, you can go back to the one second mark and then you can individually move those back. You can see I'm pressing space here. You can see how you can just bring it closer to the original point and it will basically move less So like that one. But again, tiny emotes means uh, not much is going to be that visible. There you go. And I'm going to do one last thing. I'm going to go to composition and I'm actually going to bring the Foxhound composition here just so I can add a little bit of movement to it. Now, what I can do is basically press P and animate the position, but I'm going to put a keyframe in the beginning, a keyframe at the end. Select both keyframes and I'm going to add a wiggler I have here. If you don't find it, you can just go to window wiggler and it will appear somewhere here. And basically it's a some sort of randomizer in between that's going to create keyframes depending on the frequency that you give it. We have uh, two seconds, so we don't want to have um, too much movement per second. So we're going to go with one. Let's say the magnitude is something like uh, the amount of pixels we want it to move. We know we have a 500 by 500. So let's put this at 10 and let's go for the Y axis. So it's going to move up and down, basically. And if I click apply, we're going to see the frequency and I'm going to press play. That's it. If you don't like this, we can control Z and put magnitude 20, press apply. And basically play around with it until you're satisfied with the result. Mm -hmm. 
All right, that's one done. Let's uh, do the other ones. Uh, drag and drop into your composition, editable layer styles, double click on the composition. And oh yeah, this is the one with the, uh, with the different eye positions. So here is just a matter of finding where you want to cut. For example, here I want, let's say I want it to start closing its eyes uh, right now. Let me turn that off. So that's gonna be the first layer. I'm gonna press Control Shift D because it cuts it. So like the previous one, delete it. So it's gonna go from there, from there, there, there. I can do this. I'm gonna go two frames. Second one, Control Shift D, select, delete, one, two, Control Shift D, delete, one, two, Control Shift D, delete. Nice. And I immediately wanted to open back up, right? So one, two, Control Shift D, <laughs> delete, one, two. Control Shift D, delete. You can also use page up and page down to move. One, two, that's page down. Just delete the background layer, we don't need it. So if I press play. Oh, I need to turn on all of the layers first. There we go. Okay, not the best animation, but if we look at it like that, which is what it's going to look like in chat pretty much. It's not bad either. Okay, let's just animate the whole head. I'm going to select all of those and I'm going to pre-compose. It's going to put all of them in a com composition. Then I can just basically animate the whole thing together. Move all attributes, click OK. And now we're going to use the puppet position pin tool. What it's called? Yes. All right. In this case, I want an, an anchor here and then at the tip here and maybe at the tip there and it may be something over there. Nice. Press U to see all the keyframes. As you can see, it, it automatically puts them wherever your timeline is. So I'm going to just bring that up to the first frame. I'm going to copy all of those and I'm going to paste it at the end so that every movement we have is going to be replicated. And here I'm going to select all three of those and I'm going to move them a little bit. Select elsewhere, select that one, move it up and also move that one up a bit. All right. And then we're going to do that. Let's play. Nice. Select everything in the middle. And this one we want to easy ease so that the movement is a little bit smoother. That's simple. We can ease in for that one, for the last ones, and we can ease out for the first ones. Everything should be super smooth. All right, it's that easy. Next one, we're gonna go with uh, Brett Sloan. Click OK, double click on it. And here it is. Oh yeah, I, don't, I straight up have no idea what I'm gonna do with this one, but uh, let's do it. I'm gonna delete the layers that I don't need. I'm gonna move that butter up and down. Press P for position, go to the beginning, position, the end, add a keyframe, select both keyframes. We're, we're gonna do the wiggler thing. This time we want, yeah, 10 on the Y axis. Click apply, play it. Okay, tiny movement. All right, the right eye, maybe I want it to grow a little bit. So let me go ahead and press S for scale, holding space bar here to move. And let's see what happens if I do this. All right, that's not bad, Control Z. Let's go at the end, add another keyframe. And in the middle, we want a little scale. Nice, now I actually want this eye to also follow suit. So I'm gonna go to the first position. I'm gonna go on the left eye, click on the pick whip, and then link that to the right eye. So it should follow it a little bit. Let's see how that looks. It does not look great, I'll admit. Let's maybe uh, link the mouth to it. Hey, you know what? It's not that bad. Uh, let's go to the mouth and I want to stretch it out a little bit and we're going to use our pu our puppet tool again. One here, one there. Press U. I forgot to set the timeline. There's that. I want to select this one and I want to make this pretty big and then copy the first keyframes. Is them there. Um, since the right eye is the only one with the actual scale, what we can do is, first of all, we can limit. So it goes from 100 to 117. We can make that way smaller, right? A shortcut to have the easy ease is F9. 
while you have um, those things selected, the keyframes selected. And we're going to do that in the middle here. Just easy, ease everything. And if you want like a little bit of a delay, what you can do is just delay. Select those, this mouth stretch thing and put it a little further. You can barely see it, but it doesn't matter. Um, okay. What else do we have? Bottom layer is the, the whole bread thing. And we can add a couple of puppet, puppet pin tools right there. Like the elbow, the hands, we can move that a little bit. Go in good fashion. I didn't pay attention to where I was in the timeline. So I'm going to select everything, bring it to the middle, go to one, move just a bit, select all of the first ones and paste them at the end. Okay, easy ease with F9. And for this one, you can just move them wherever you want so that the hands are not necessarily synchronized. All right, for some reason, I really feel like adding one more middle here and then at the tippy top. Okay. All right, press U again to reveal the two new puppet tool keyframes. So like them, control C, control V, F9, F9, F9. Move this around. And there it is. All right, make sure you're saving. This is Adobe After Effects after all. It's gonna crash at some point to test you. What else do we have left? Oh, Killer King. All right, let's drag and drop, editable layer styles, double click, nice. So we have the hands, we have the head. We don't need the background, we can delete that. Uh, and let's animate. Let's animate. For the hands, I could just go with a uh, scale. For example, I press S and I can just do this. Yeah, let's do that. Just to show that you don't have to use the puppet tool. I'm going to press P. I'm going to hold shift, press S to have both position and scale. And I'm going to add a keyframe at the beginning, add keyframes at the end, go to the middle, move this up a little bit. And in position, we want it to go up just mostly to cover those parts, right? Because I didn't completely clean it up. I don't have the, the layers completely separated. I just want to cover the hands that were behind here. Oops, control. Okay, so 103 for the scale. And I just want to go back up a little bit. Nice. Let's see what 104 would look like, or even 105. And let's adjust the position, of course. There you go. Oh, if I press play. Nice. Select the middle. I'm going to F9. Actually, select everything in F9. Cool. I want the head to be bobbing like left and right. I'm going to select the head. And what we're going to do here is actually go to the pen behind or anchor point tool. And I want the anchor point to be around where the neck would be. So we're going to place it around, around the lips. Nice. And we're going to press R for rotation on there. And we're going to do the same thing we've been doing. Boom. Keyframe. Actually end keyframe. No, wait, we want it to go left and right. So we might actually start with a rotation. Nice. So minus five here. We're going to start with minus five this time. And in the middle, we want to go to just five. OK, so that means at the end, we need to go back to minus five. All right, select every keyframe F9 and you're pretty much done. It is so easy. <laughs> All right, since we're done, what we can do is actually export this. And one way to do this would be to add to media encoder. Hopefully that works for me. And the reason why we're doing this is because with media encoder, we can compress it. We can tell it, hey, I want this as an animated GIF. And here are the exact compression settings. Oh, in fact, it already knows. But basically, this would be the settings here. And from there, you can switch uh, the width. Whatever Twitch is asking you, you can be like, uh, what is it? 112 is the max. You can tell it, hey, I want this at 112. Boom, there you go. You can already see like the resolution that you lose, but that's normal. Click OK. And I think I could add all of them to the 
EQ at the same time. So Brett Sloan, let's go ahead and composition, add to media encoder, ampersand, media encoder, and real foxhound, media encoder. Nice. You can even go ahead and like select all of them, for example, and just you're modifying all of them. Basically, they're all going to be 112. If you're doing this and they're still too big, you can lower the resolution and also the frame rate is a big one. Click OK and then press play to render everything. Just like that, everything is rendered. Let's go find them. And here they are. We have four GIFs here. And here's what we made. Of course, you can exaggerate way more when it comes to the animation and make things pop a little bit more, especially if they're going to be in chat. But uh, for someone who doesn't really like to animate, I'd say this is not too bad. The goal here is to basically show you the process, how you would go about taking emotes that are already made and then turning them into something that is animated. All right, so for the people who have been selected, make sure you check your DMs on Twitter. I'm gonna be sending them to you. And for the rest of you, hopefully this video was useful. If you liked it, uh, you will probably like this video right here, where I show you how to easily make Twitch emotes without drawing or anything like that. Today is December 31st and it's been an amazing year and I have to thank all of you for that. Thank you so, so much. I'm so excited to show you more stuff in 2023. So happy new year. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Go out there, make me proud, get level, 